So um, as Mark said, my name is Jennifer, um, Jennifer Thompson. I am a 30 year old um, female um, with who suffers from sickle cell um, disease or sickle cell disorder. Um, and I thought I'd just share, I guess, a first hand experience of what both the physical pain of sickle is like, as well as the the psychological sort of elements um, to the disorder. Um, so next slide, please. Uh, in the next, yeah, if we just click all of them, yeah, and then I'll just go, through, yeah, thank you. Um, so physical pain and its effects, um, sort of, I guess, as physicians and medical staff, um, and as, as a sickle cell patient, the, the question that we get mo most asked is, what, you know, score your pain, or what does, this, what does the pain feel like? And I think for a lot of sickle patients, it is quite difficult to put into words and to explain what that pain feels like. So I, I did have a think and I tried to sort of um, try to think of a quite visual way to maybe describe it. So oftentimes when I'm asked, um, I describe it as having somebody chiseling or hammering at your bone continuously. So in that you're not only feeling the sort of immediate impact of that hammer or that chisel on that part of your bone, but there's also the kind of shock waves or reverberations that then go through your bone so there's kind of like almost like a secondary wave of pain um and that and that particular thing that i've just described sort of happening everywhere um other sickle patients that i've spoken to have described it as having like multiple fractures or multiple broken bones and then what feels like glass um, sort of flowing through your body in terms of those sharp shocks um, and then I've read an account um, on a blog of a sick, another sickle cell patient who has described it as imagine tying a rubber band on the edge of your finger and just tying it over and over and over again until you can't tie it anymore, leaving it on for about five, ten minutes and then snapping that band off. That initial sharp pain that you get in your finger, so imagine that being essentially inside your bone and that sort of happening continuously. Um, that's, I think, kind of some of the ways that I know, and, you know, and reading all of those and hearing other patients talk about them instantly, I know what they're talking about. So that's something, I guess, is the closest way I can describe to what the, the physical pain feels like. Um, other aspects, I guess, of the physical pain of sickle is just how debilitating it is. Um, so, you know, it's sort of sickle crisis, I'm, you, as you probably all know and seen patients with it, when it when a crisis hits you no matter where you are and it hits hard and you can go from being you know i can go from being independent going out shopping thinking about what i'm going to do in my normal day-to-day -day life and then a crisis hits and no matter how independent you are sort of you, you know you get to a point where you can't sit you can't stand you can't lay down you can't you know pick up a pen you can't feed yourself and you go from being somebody who's you know probably very independent capable of doing everything normally to not being able to assist yourself without somebody else um and then that goes on to the next part which is the frustration part in that it's a con for me anyway it's a constant struggle when you're in the midst of a sickle an acute sickle cell crisis i should say anyway and also, also sometimes um a chronic one but i'll touch on that a bit later in in the sort of the midst of your crisis there's this constant struggle between what you want your body to be able to do and what your body can or therefore can't do and this is in itself sort of exacerbates the psychological effects of the pain because because it's very much a, a pain of the body and not of not of sort of not of the mind in that sense you feel very capable in your mind but your body very much does not and it's trying to remedy those two things and you're sort of you know you're lying in bed you're thinking of all these amazing things I could be doing I should be here I should be there and you literally can't even you can't even pick up a pen and I think that's a constant struggle that I know as a sick cell patient I struggle with um with quite a lot and then the next thing that I was thinking of, which I think sometimes is one of the more overlooked physical effects of sickle pain, is exhaustion from the pain itself. So you're going through 
this horrendous pain and sometimes depending on how bad that crisis and on that scale that Kofi was talking about sometimes the worst crisis pain you've had in your life and the nature of the pain and how relentless and incessant it is you find yourself so the pain sort of almost goes through peaks and troughs but the troughs aren't pain-free moments they're still very much a baseline of pain but then you get that as I was saying with the hammer and chisel you get that sort of sudden impact or that that peak of pain and you find yourself almost tensing your body in anticipation of the next wave of pain so you're constantly doing that for however long your crisis is that can be a few hours that can be days that can be weeks that can be months and you're phys- you're kind of you're tensing yourself in anticipation of all of these waves of pain to try to maybe you're thinking okay if I if I'm ready for it a little bit you know maybe it won't feel as bad as the last time and that leads to a sort of physical exhaustion because you're using your, your muscles to to kind of prepare yourself for these waves of pain so I think that's um when I think about my sort of when I'm in a crisis that's probably one of the things that I maybe don't um articulate maybe to my team it's just how exhausted I am from the pain because your main focus is just getting rid of the the bone pain the kind of the crisis pain um sorry next slide um please Ra. thank you um so then I was thinking about the psychological effects and for me it wasn't until probably my mid-20s that I started to even acknowledge or understand how much of a toll sickle has had on me and does have on me. So um, I say that to say that, I mean, there absolutely, absolutely is a psychological, you know, component to sickle, but I, 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 like I'm saying, I, in my younger years when I was in paediatrics and even when I moved into adult care for the first few years, I didn't really acknowledge the psychological or, no, or I was unaware of the psychological part, because again, when you're in that much pain, your most immediate thoughts and worry is just about how do, how do I stop myself feeling this physical pain? Everything else almost becomes a bit of a kind of secondary back burner um, type of need. But um, one of the ones in speaking to like sort of people around me about it's just the change in mood and you're in pain. So, you know, and that that this also comes from chronic pain as well as the acute pains. Um, when you're in pain, and then I'm, I'm sure m- most people, not just sickle cell patients, can you know hopefully identify with this. You're a little bit more short with the people that are around you. A bit more, ir- you're a lot more irritable. You're kind of you know your your patients wear thin quite quickly. Um, you don't, yeah, you don't really have. You're not really in the mood for a lot of you know things and socialising and things like that. And so that's something that, in terms of when I think about that in times or in days when I'm either pain free or have my my pain score is a lot lower it then brings on a sudden oh my gosh I was really mean to so and so I was I didn't mean to snap at this person but again these are things that you kind of don't in the time in the moment when you're in the pain you don't really realize it and it then kind of brings a secondary wave of feeling either embarrassed or shameful that you've your your whole mood has changed and you've kind of become slightly this person just because of the pain um then there's the kind of your mind and body misalignment which I kind of touched on a little bit um when I was talking about the physical pain um and for me personally that's one of the hardest part of dealing with my disorder as a whole um in that sickle sickle cell can be a bit of a sort of I guess what I describe a Mr Hyde Dr Jekyll kind of disorder in that when you're quote-unquote fine or outwardly you appear fine or you're not in as much pain you're not having an acute crisis um you very much feel in your mind that you want to be able to do all the things that you want to achieve you want to be able to do do things like how normal quote unquote healthy you know people your age or peers live their lives and do what they want to do but internally you're constantly struggling with what you're capable of doing and you're constantly on this edge of what can I do but not push it so far that I get a crisis so your disorder is constantly in your mind it's constantly at the forefront of everything that you're thinking of and you're planning you know and you want to do you want to go to the shops but it's now the middle of winter will this you know 10 minutes trip to the shop you know would that cause you problems when you come home you want to go on holiday where like it's this it's it's a constant or you want to commute to work but you your hip has been playing up what's the best thing to do do you call in sick do you stay at home do you not it's a constant struggle with 
what you feel that you're capable of doing and what you want to be capable of doing and what your body will not allow you to do and I know for me that's that's been a constant struggle throughout you know my whole life and sort of and having sickle and especially much more so when my chronic pain became um a much more present force in my life with my vascular necrosis in that it then it doesn't then just become the acute pain and you know a very finite time that you can't do something it then takes over essentially your whole life because it's an everyday it's an everyday thing um, then there's also the aspects of feeling like a burden to those around you um, and again because of how de debilitating the pain can be uh, and like I mentioned you can go from being absolutely being fine being able to do everything yourself uh, and depending where you have your crises and who's around you you then have to sort of almost in an instant put aside all feelings of shame or feelings of pride because you, you're so helpless and you're so powerless within your own body that you need whoever's around you no matter who they are to be able to assist you and help you and sometimes save your life and that you know after one or two times you're thinking oh okay well that but the more it happens the more you then kind of take on this feeling of like oh I don't want to go out with my friends if I feel a bit poorer because I don't want them to have to look after me. Like you then start to internalise those feelings of being a bit burdensome to other people and to those around you. Um, and then one of the other ones that I sort of was thinking of in terms of the psychological effects of sickle pain, chronic and acute, is a kind of feeling of an inability to let go. And I say that in the sense of in my experience, my sickle cell care hasn't been uniform and hasn't been the same across all hospitals. Um, I definitely noticed that I there's a certain type of care that I receive from big hubs such as um, like St George's who are very familiar with sickle care and sickle pain. And then when I've had a crisis or had to attend smaller localised hospitals who aren't so aware with it, the the knowledge isn't uniform across all of those um, places. So what I have found, you know, since I've been an adult, since my parents have stopped having to come with me to hospital and I've been an adult caring for myself if I've had to go in for a crisis, is I have this constant need to feel like to, to feel like I have to be alert and I have to be fully engaged in what's going on because to kind of to to get the best treatment or to make sure that everybody understands what sickle cell is, you know, to understand that I have a protocol and that they're following the protocol and to kind of feel like I get the best care. I feel like I have to be alert and engaged in that care. And if you can imagine, you're already going through, you know, at sometimes a level nine, level 10 pain, and then still feeling like you're unable to just kind of let go and let people do their jobs and do what they need to do and I think it's no I don't want to say that as in it's no um disrespect or anything to the teams or to feel like you don't have trust in them that's not what it is so whatsoever but I think as a sickle say patients I'm sure many patients have the same experience when you go into A&E um sometimes your protocol isn't followed or you know you're not being asked the right kind of questions or you're waiting for treatment you're waiting for care um and if you're not switched on and asking for what you need or making sure, you know, it's been half an hour or actually, you know, I've had this pain medication 40 minutes ago and nothing's happened. Is there anything else I can have or what else? If you're not on the ball, sometimes you feel a little bit like, oh, OK, maybe I'm not going to get <laughs> going to get what I need to be able to bring this pain level down. And I think that's another psychological effect of the pain is just this constant need to always be so engaged, even when you are at the, you know, kind of your absolute limit in terms of physical pain. And I think for me, usually the sooner I know that I, I come into an A&E clinic or an a, you know, um, healthcare facility, the sooner I feel that the team around me are asking me the kind of right questions in like, do you have a protocol? What have you taken? The, so you know, the sooner that I usually tend to feel like, okay, I can tap out of this care situation and just focus on calming myself down you know trying to go somewhere in my mind to feel more relaxed so the pain doesn't feel as bad um and i think that's something that i know a lot of other sickle patients go through is this constant need to feel like they have to be alert <laughs> in um in sort of in and they have to be very present even when they're in the midst of a really bad crisis um so my next part was just thinking about what I guess from my what I was thinking is from my perspective, what I would feel like would be helpful to me as a sickle patient if I was coming in 
with an acute pain or if I was coming with some chronic pain. And I think um, this has probably been touched upon, but looking at sickle or taking a holistic approach with sickle patients and that absolutely the, the physical pain for me anyway is always the number one thing that I'm trying to reduce or get rid of. But there are the psychological burdens that comes with that. And I think feeling supported in those is definitely also incredibly helpful and looking at yeah looking at my pain as a as a whole rather than just here are drugs to stop the pain and that's absolutely essential but I think a, a, a holistic approach to it is really helpful for, would be helpful for me and also um communication with patients just feeling listened to when you're in hospital when you're talking about your pain I think um Dr Annie touched upon this in terms of um, sometimes when your pain has come down a little bit, so on the surface, you're, you're, you're on your phone or you're having a conversation, your distraction is a really big part of taking your mind off the pain. So outwardly, you look like you're in less pain or you're fine. That doesn't necessarily translate to reality in that you could be still in a lot of pain, but it's just less than what it was. Um, sort of like a pain scale nine is still less than a 10, but it's still pretty bad. And you're just trying to distract yourself. So I think feel and listen to as a patient when I say I might be smiling with the nurses and we're chatting about what I'm going to be doing when I get out of hospital but if 10 minutes later I, I, can, I can say I'm in a lot of pain still and I feel like I need something or what, what, it, what can I have? I think feeling listened to is a really big part um, of I guess the care that I would like to receive anyway. But yeah so that's um, I hope this, I don't know, if it lightens some, some of the experiences of a sickle patient, but um, I'm happy for any questions also, I think, at the end, there's some time. Thank, thank you very much, Jennifer, for those, those personal and, and, and very powerful insights. And 